morning and welcome back. You're watching World Talks here on TVP World. Today, U.S. President Joe Biden is to meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping in Peru as they're both attending the APEC summit. Biden is already preparing to hand over power to President-elect Donald Trump in January. So this will most likely be their last meeting with Xi. To discuss its importance, we have Tomasz Obremski, resident fellow Kazimierz Pulaski Foundation, joining me right now. Good morning, sir. Delighted to have you with us. Good morning. So let me start with a basic question. What is Biden trying to achieve? What is on his agenda for this meeting? We can say that the history repeats itself because exactly eight years ago, Barack Obama also um, had a meeting with Xi Jinping as a lame duck after the elections where it was already certain that Donald Trump will take over White House in January. It was also APEC summit and it was also in Lima. And um, this was bookend moment for Obama. And I think this is also bookend moment for Joe Biden to summarize a uh, very close relationship between do, do those two gentlemen. Um, they first met in 2011 um, uh, as Vice President Joe Biden traveled to China to visit China for longer period and his host was Vice President at that time Xi Jinping. So they really spent a lot of time together. They have seen each other going to the top of the leadership of their countries. And um, this, is, this is a goodbye, this is a moment to say thank you, but also summarize what, can, what went wrong during their, um, between those two countries, uh, what went well, uh, and what to prepare for with the new administration. And this is, this is probably the most interesting from the Chinese part. Right, because it was a rather bumpy road, I mean, the, the relationship between the two, right? With uh, 2023, uh, we had this major crisis. Um, so how would you assess their the relationship overall? I mean, is he ending on a positive note? Is it still tense? What shall we? It's definitely still tensed. Uh, Joe Biden didn't lift any sanctions Donald Trump imposed on China, although in Beijing there were some, some hopes about it. Um, then we had a very, um, very stormy talks in Alaska between two administrations without presidents, though. Uh, but it set, a, set a relations between two administrations as very stormy. Then we had a landing of Nancy Pelosi in Taipei, which was also very controversial from the Chinese side. We had two meetings between two gentlemen, uh, one in Bali during the G20, one in California last, last year, also during the APEC summit. So um, there, there were, but there were. Some some issues where United States and China were able to cooperate on, for example, the, the decrease of fentanyl uh, coming from China to the United States, uh, some cooperation on climate change, some cooperation on uh, artificial intelligence. So definitely it was stormy, definitely it was bumpy, but there was mutual trust and mutual respect between two presidents. There were open lines of communications. This is something Joe Biden was uh, very much eager to sustain. And um, apart from regular meetings, uh, there were also regular meetings of Jake Sullivan in Beijing, um, uh, Anthony Blinken, and also very regular phone calls. This is also despite the fact that Joe Biden called uh, on numerous occasions Xi Jinping dictator. So despite this fact, uh, Xi had this trust to, to Joe Biden to, to keep the communications open and keep meeting with him. So do you think that Biden is trying to prep Xi in a way uh because of what's coming, because uh, during the last uh, Trump administration, I mean, he ramped up hostility, um, highlighted human rights abuses in Xinjiang, um, so bolstered support for Taiwan, and also launched a trade war with China. And of course, more tariffs are coming, we know that. Yes, it's not like Biden will give any hints to, to, China, to China, like his interest is the best interest of the United States and he's from this position going to these negotiations. White House officials says not to expect much from this meeting, like there will be no big communications, no big agreements. It will be honest talks between two gentlemen that know each other countries uh, very well. And, but of course, Joe Biden can have some hints for China how to avoid direct confrontation uh, because um, Donald Trump's new administration is going to be very hawkish on China. All the nominees uh, from Marco Rubio to Mike Waltz to Hexgen, um, they are the thing in common is very hawkish approach to China. So of course, during this administration, we had tariffs, we had narrative wars, narrative 
confrontations, but here uh, things can get uh, more um, hot, especially that according to some analysts, we are coming to this very perilous uh, moment uh, where China is um, losing its demographic, uh, the, the demographic advantage, losing its economic growth, and m this might be the moment, uh, the last window of opportunity for them to seize control over Taiwan around 27, around 28. So, uh, so Joe Biden should uh, give as many hints to the new administration from this meeting and also tell China how to avoid the confrontation because it's absolutely in the nobody's interest. Uh, right, so this is sort of, um, I mean, Henry Kissinger, right, who, who, the late Henry Kissinger, who was, I mean, by some regarded as the architect of, the, of this opening uh, between uh, China and the U.S., um, went to Beijing some time ago um, to mend the relationship when, when it was uh, sort of in trouble. And I've read that um, China at the moment is looking for another Kissinger somewhere in the U.S. to, to be able to provide them with, with support um, in case uh, they need it, right? And uh, Kissinger's philosophy was the engagement regarding, regardless of, of the cost. So I feel like perhaps Biden will somewhat also uh, held a similar view, at least that engagement is important. But it doesn't seem that, that Trump uh, really shares this, this view, right? Absolutely not. So. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, yes, and engagement is not the same as open lines of communication. I think this is the, the biggest objective for Joe Biden to also ensure that there will be open lines between Beijing and Washington as the new administration comes in. Um, especially that this um, axis of evil from the American perspective is um, much more stronger, much more coherent than it used to be. Um, this Kissinger moment uh, was the Kissinger moment was also in the moment where where there were not good relationship between Moscow and Beijing. Right now we have something different. This is the biggest um, bad legacy Biden leaves in U.S.-China relationship. That this relationship between Moscow and Beijing got very much closer. North Korea got also very much engaged in this war, anti-Western war. We have also Iran chipping in. Uh, so never before this axis of evil has been so united against um, against U.S. and its allies so um, this um, I wouldn't see any any hopes for new Kissinger in the old or new administration from Beijing side so you've mentioned uh, Taiwan already um, what are the prospects on that do you feel like th there will be uh, there will be an open confrontation when Trump takes office it's, it's a million dollar question. Uh, let's see how things go. Let's see also how this transition period goes. This is the moment where China could see some provocations on Philippines, uh, on naval uh, ship around Taiwan during these two months. Maybe this is also going to be subject of these talks in Lima between Biden and Xi not to try anything because that can only spoil the relationship in the future. Um, but, uh, but, but, but yeah, this is something very dangerous from our Central European perspective because the new administration of Donald Trump. Uh, we always try to discuss those new nominees. Uh, what's their position on Ukraine? What's their position on Russia? But first of all, their first position is on China and second position on Iran. And Russia becomes here the third issue. Um, of course, we can say that relations with China was also on the top of the priority list for Biden's administration, but on top of the agenda because of ongoing conflict, because of the eruption of the conflict, it was it was mainly Russia. Right now, this um, this main point of, of, of attention will definitely move to Asia. Okay, um, now let's uh, turn to the issue of tariffs, because uh, Trump, of course, said that he will introduce uh, these massive tariffs on China. Uh, but some are arguing that because he said so, it gives uh, well, China heads up to, to prep better than the last time around when, when he took office. What do you think? In in opinion of Mark Rubio, for example, uh, those uh, tariffs are supposed to level the playing field because of China's um, China's policy in China. This export of Chinese goods is dumped. So um, so this is reciprocal reaction from the U.S. perspective. But China, of course, will retaliate with their own tariffs and from there we we cannot predict where such a trade war where such an economic war actually will go to definitely china will look for new markets for its products for its um, electric vehicles probably the eu and this is some kind of opportunity because the eu was uh, really struggling to to bring chinese to the table to um, to to persuade them to, to accept some of uh, objectives the European Union had. And maybe now China will be more willing to accept some 
um, some ideas like if you want to sell our Europe our, your uh, electric vehicles you can do it but please produce them in Europe this is something also Poland tries to do with Isera with with uh, in cooperation with Geely and more and more countries wants to bring those investments from China a bit of repeat of the history uh, when when the combustion engines were invested in China now we are trying to lure Chinese investment into Europe uh, but this is something China was very skeptical to do but now maybe since US market might be lost with 60%, 100%, even Donald Trump says 200% tariffs on any goods. Um, Europe will have more space to negotiate with China on the better terms. Right. So, I mean, uh, because they, they, they are meeting during the APEC uh, summit, let me just briefly ask you about Asia Pacific, because Biden has already uh, met with Japanese and South Korean uh, leaders. So, uh, what implications uh, the worsening of, of relations between the US and China could possibly have for the rest of Asia? APEC is, um, is a corporation which brings up together 60% uh, of the world's GDP, 40% of, of the world's trade. And those are countries, this is, this is region which is very much uh, looking forward for the open trade routes, for open investments and uh, fragmentation of the world trade is very precarious for them. And uh, this is a bit symbolic because also Xi Jinping came to Lima, to Peru, to open the new um, new harbor 80 kilometers north of Lima, which from Peruvian perspective is hoped to be a new Singapore for Latin America. Um, the thing is that such vacuum will be absorbed by somebody else. And this is also the objective for the EU to um, to close the deal with Mercosur, because as Kaya Kala said during the hearing, if we're not going to do that, somebody else is going to come in. However, French are very concerned about uh, about farmer about their agriculture goods. So there is a lot of puzzle, a lot of space. It's been going on for a while, right? I mean, 20 years or more? Yes, it's uh, so this is the thing, like, the, other con developing countries, Global South, are, there is a big promise fatigue over Western uh, Western promises, Western investments. So um, it's not like this vacuum will be not filled by anybody. It will be filled by China. So um, of course, the tariffs imposed by Donald Trump will be very challenging for for China, but it will also be some kind of opportunity to 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 move to, and expand to the world. Interesting times ahead. A little scary, I have to uh, admit. Tomasz Obremski, thank you, sir, for being with us this morning. Thank you for Much having me. Have a great weekend. And thank you for watching World Talks. Please stay tuned for more here on TVP World.